the first thing we're going to do when we start looking for solutions to quadratic equations is look at the graph and how they're connected. So for example, let's pretend this is the parabola y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 6, and we're going to graph it by finding its vertex. So the x coordinate is going to happen at 1, and I can use this equation here to find the y coordinate. So 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 6 is 2 minus 4 minus 6, so that'll be uh, negative 8. So there's my coordinates. x is negative 1, y is negative 8, and the vertex will be right here. I can also see there's a vertical stretch of 2. So that's all the pieces I need then to make a quick sketch. Oops, should be here. So my parabola will roughly look like this. And now this parabola shows me a picture for all the values that it takes on. And the one I'm interested in is this one here, where it's equal to 0. So what I'll do then is, this is where the graph equals to 0, all along this line, where y equals 0. So this is one of the possible solutions where it touches, and the other one here. So essentially I'm looking for the x-intercepts. So I can see here one possible value is x equals negative 1, and the other value here is x equals to 3. That means uh, the solutions to the original equation are x equals negative 1 and negative 3. We'll verify one of these, so let's try x equals 3. That would be 2 times 3 squared minus 4 times 3 minus 6. So that'll be 2 times 9, which is 18 minus 12, minus 6, 18 minus 18, which is 0. So that is, in fact, one of the solutions to this equation. And it would also work the same if we put in the negative 1 for x. So we'll go and try this next one here. Again, we're pretending this is a parabola that's uh, been written in standard form. So I'm going to have a vertex is what I'd like to start with. So the x-coordinate is 4, and then 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 15. That's going to be 16 minus 32 plus 15. So that's negative 1. So the vertex is positive 4, negative 1. And no stretch has been applied to the graph, so it's just this parabola here. and it would roughly look like this after I sketch it out. But again, we sketched it so we could find the x-intercepts, because that shows me where that graph is equal to 0, and that's going to give me the solution to this equation. So I can see two possible answers here, one when x equals to 3, and another when x equals to 5. Let's verify one. Um, this time we'll try x equals 5. So x squared minus 8x plus 15. If I use x equals 5, 25 minus 40 plus 15. That'll be 40 minus 40, which is 0. So it does in fact work, as would x equals 3 as a solution to that original equation. So now that you've seen how the graphs can help us find some of those solutions to those equations, we should take a look at the types that you could have. For example, it's possible that you have two solutions. That's when the graph starts below the x-axis and goes up, like this. The other thing that could happen is the vertex could be above, but then it has to point down. So basically when we say we're looking for two solutions, we're looking for two x-intercepts. And if you know where to find the vertex, whether it's above or below, you just need to know if the parabola points up or down to figure out if it has those two solutions. Now for graphs that have um, of parabolas with one solution, that means it must be somewhere along the bottom here. So it could be like this, or it could be like this. It has to touch the x-axis right there like that. 
And it doesn't matter either way which way it's pointing because even if I had the same parabola through that point, it still has the one solution right there even though it's pointing up. So it doesn't matter if it's up or down. The only thing that matters here is that the vertex is on the x-axis. So in this case, whatever coordinate you have here for x, the y-coordinate must be a 0. So you'd have an x there and 0. And then finally, it's possible to have a parabola that has no x-intercepts. And that's if we run into a case like this. I'm somewhere above the x-axis and going up. I'll never get back down there, so there's no solution here. See, along the axes, it never touched. Or it could be that I'm below the x-axis and pointing down. So the way we can find the number of solutions then depends on where's the vertex and what direction the uh, parabola is going. So the first things we've looked at had nice answers to them, but they may not always have nice answers. So we're going to take a look at approximate solutions um, because these ones here won't fall right onto the x values like they did in the first examples. But we can start the same way we did before, um, which is to say let's find the vertex. So 3, and then the value for y will be 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. So I'm going to have 9 minus 18 plus 3. So negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. So the vertex is at 3, negative 6. That'll look like this if I try to plot it. And there's no value in front of this, it's just a 1. So that means it's going to have the regular shape that a parabola, parabola takes on. It has not been stretched at all. So here's some of the possible points. Maybe I'll do one more just to help get a better picture so my answer looks closer to the uh, real one. And now if I do my best to get through those points, not bad. Uh, maybe that one could have gone a bit better. But these would be the solutions I'm still looking for. It's x-intercepts. And I have to estimate. So maybe this is x equals 0 0.2. And maybe this one is uh, x equals 5.1. But uh, the best we can do is to estimate there. And the best estimates are going to come from better pictures. So if you do have access to your graphing calculator, um, then that would be a great way to do it. If you also have some software, we can take a look and see what y equals x squared minus 6x plus 3 really looks like. Um, so not bad. I mean, for my drawing, let's see here, this one tells me it's at 0.54, so I was off a fair amount there. It's closer to a half. And here, this one is 5.4. So again, not great, but not bad. The other calculator course that I recommend that you see is the one here, which is uh, Desmos. And um, most browsers, when you hit F11, will go to full screen mode like that and then you'll be able to um, you know, use more of the, the browser window to do it. F11 will get you back to the screen that you had. So the one, again, that we just looked at was x squared uh, minus 6x plus 3. And it's showing me some of those points there at 0.55 and 0.5499. So Desmos is pretty smart. It's finding the intercepts, finding the vertex and finding the y-intercept for me as well, because it knows those points are uh, special to that graph. So this next equation is a bit of a mess. We're not going to be able to graph this in the form that it's at there. So, but what we're going to want to do is collect like terms. So if I collect like terms here, four, negative 4 and 6x squared means I'm going to have 2x squared. The x's, when I move this over the other side, and I have an x here, there will be 8x's. And this is negative 1, and when I move this negative 3 to the other side, um, that will give me positive 2. So let's look for the vertex, which is negative b over 2a, which is negative 2. And I'll use this value then to find the value for y. So 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 2. It's going to give me, so 2 times 4 is 8, minus 16, 
plus 2. So that's 10 minus 16, which is negative 6. That means the vertex at negative 2 and negative 6. Right there. And this one has had a vertical stretch applied. Um, it's been multiplied by 2. So the pattern I'd be following this time would be to double as I move the parabola up. And that means this next one will go up by 8. So I'll be right here. And I could keep plotting more points, but I'm really only interested in the ones once I cross the axes there because um, now that I've got points to go through on above and below the x-axis, um, that's enough to hopefully give me a good picture of the x-intercepts. And that was terrible. Here, let me try that one again. Oh boy. Okay, one more. Well, that'll have to do for now. Um, I would estimate for my picture here, if I was to look at this one, that's negative 4, so let's try negative 3.9 as my uh, estimate. And then I'll try this. Let's say that's negative 0 0.3. So I'll use Desmos this time to double check. And again, it's this one that I'm going to be using. So we'll put in y equals 2x squared um, plus 8x plus 2. Yep. And there it is. So the first one. I had to oops if I had to estimate 3.7 okay so I got better this time and negative 2.27 okay so again my estimates got better there with my graph so when you're looking to solve with the graph um, you're trying to find the x-intercepts and use the techniques we learned from last unit about graphing quadratic equations